Second, let's look at closed doors. We have all faced closed doors, right? We have pr we've prayed, we've planned, we've prepared, we've desired, we've wanted, we've reasoned, and things don't work out the way we've, we've thought it. Um, for every success I've had, I think I've had about a thousand failures, because just the failures just add up and add up, and there's tons of them. First, I want to look at continuous closed doors. Continuous closed doors. So, so if you look at the map, you will see that Paul came from what is called a Pisidian Antioch. That's where they started in earnest their second journey. Well, they started it from Syrian Antioch, came across to some other cities that they had seen in their first missionary journey, like Derby and Lystra and Iconium. And then after they did some follow-up work on previous churches, now they're starting to go to new areas. They start from Pisidian Antioch, and then they go Asia's on the south side, on the left side of that journey. They start at Phrygian Galatia, and then it's a no, it's a closed door there. Then they go to Asia on the left, it's a closed door there. And then they try to go to Bithynia, which is north on the south side of the Black Sea, and it's a closed door there. And then they go across to Mysia, and this is a long journey across. They go across to Mysia on the south side, and it's a closed door everywhere. And so now the team is wondering, what's, what's going on? We started with our team, and it's closed doors. They were perplexed as they left behind city after city and they kept moving along. And they go down across the coast and down into Troas. Finally, they left all the other cities behind. And, and from Pisidian Antioch, where they started to Troas, is about 300 miles. And they are on foot. And they are walking and walking and walking. And there's closed door after closed door after closed door. Sometimes you have closed doors for the longest time to a point where you have, you have forgotten what it is to have an open door. Isn't it? Maybe it's a kid that you're praying about and it's a closed door. Maybe it's a job you're praying about and it's a closed door. Maybe it's marriage you're praying about. Maybe it's a family dynamic. Maybe it's a ministry you're praying about. And it's a closed door, and closed door, and week after week, month after month, it's a closed door. Then they come to Troas, and Troas is primarily a port city. It had an artificial harbor, and there was a lot of travel that went through Troas. So from Troas, you can go to Macedonia, as these disciples did. You can go to Greece and Europe beyond. So there was a lot of travel that happened in Troas. And Caesar Augustus had declared Troas to be a colony city, so there was a sizable population there. And so this was one of those strategic cities that Paul would have gone and done evangelism in. And here, as they're walking down across the coast, they come to Troas and uh, they are kind of excited because this is a strategic city. Yes, we left Mysia and Bithynia and all the other places behind, but this is going to be a great time of evangelism from now on. And they come to Troas and it's a closed door. They were there in Troas for a while. How do we know this? Let me read the passage again from verse 8 following. Acts chapter 16, verse 8. So they passed by Mysia and went down to Troas. During the night, Paul had a vision of a man in Macedonia standing and begging him, come over to Macedonia and help us. After Paul had seen the vision, we got ready at once to leave for Macedonia, concluding that God had called us to preach the gospel to them. Did you catch the change in grammar? Let me read the second half of verse 9 following. Come over to Macedonia and help us. After Paul had seen the vision, we got ready at once to leave. We got ready at once. Who's we? Right? We is the author of the book, Luke. Luke wasn't part of the original team. There are three times in the book of Acts where Luke is part of the story. This is the first one. The second one is in chapter 20, and the third one is in 27, 28, where he is part of the story. Luke is not from Troas. It's not like they came to his hometown and he's right there. 
Luke is from a thousand miles away in Syrian Antioch. Luke shows up there, so, which means that they were in Troas for a while, sitting with this closed door. They had come for the ministry, living in somebody else's home, waiting for the door to open up. As it turns out, Luke met Paul twice on two missionary journeys. On the second missionary journey, Luke came to Troas where Paul and his team were and then went to Philippi with them. After that, on his third missionary journey, when Paul came to Troas, Luke came to Troas and met them. What I'm going to say next is very important. Just because we have continuous closed doors does not mean that the next open door is from God. We can be tempted to think that, man, I have not had a job opening for all this time. I've been waiting and waiting and waiting. Nothing has happened. And the next time it opens, I just automatically assume it's from God and take it. And that may not be true. Because like we said earlier, we have to find out who is opening the door. It need not be God. 